Yeah, you're in this. Okay. All right. So let's tell them. We're at Anastasia State Park near St. Augustine, Florida, and enjoying a nice walk down the beach. We're looking forward to doing some sightseeing around the area, too. This is, I believe, Florida's oldest city? Yep, that's what I'm told. Come on along with Miles and Smiles. The sign said 62 degrees. For the water? For the water. That's almost the same temperature as the air. But 62 water degrees does not feel like you just need a jacket or a t-shirt. Sometimes when you come to a new area where there's lots of things to see and do, the best strategy is to take a tour to give you kind of an overview uh, when you first arrive. We've heard that the Old Town Trolley Tours here in St. Augustine are a good way to do that. So that's our first stop for today. The shells is because in the colonial days when that wall was built, the shells were very sharp and they were a natural deterrent to anyone considering climbing over. trolley tour includes admission to uh, the uh, St. Augustine History Museum. very far. Over a thousand years old. Made from uh, pine trees. So we had a great time on the Old Town Trolley Tour of St. Augustine. Learned a lot of interesting things about uh, this uh, oldest city in America. Uh, one tip. Uh, some of the tour guides are better than others but it is a hop-on, hop-off tour. Uh, the first guy we had was uh, okay, but we really couldn't understand him very well. Uh, we got off, did a little bit of walking around, got onto another trolley just at random, and our second guy, a guy named Bruce, was just awesome. Uh, very in love with the subject matter, and we could understand every word that he said. So if you do this, don't despair if you don't get the first best guide. Get off, get on the next one, and you're good. One of the nice little features of Anastasia State Park is a nature trail. And it's nice and cool here underneath the shade and lots of different kinds of trees and plants and bushes and some signs to tell you what you're looking at. And we expected it, because we're in Florida, to be flat. 
but there are an amazing number of hills up and down even enough to need handrails and built-in steps so you never know you never know and those hills that we went up and down they're actually sand dunes um, from many moons ago <laughs> when the, the when this ground probably was underwater and the dunes uh, were right next to it the water has receded quite a ways since then um, but those were sand dunes pretty cool they say don't walk on sand dunes but i guess here you can something fascinating down there no, you know it's going to come next, so let's just turn the camera away. These are resurrection ferns. What's cool about them is that they're an epiphyte. They are they live on trees, but they don't harm the tree. They're not a parasite. They just live there because it's a convenient place to grow. When it's damp outside, they're beautiful lush green ferns, but when uh, there's a dry season, they dry up into a dark kind of brown mass and they look like they're dead until it rains again, and then they are resurrected into another beautiful uh, crop of green ferns. This is a juvenile palm. You can tell by the point where all of the leaves come together. And I don't know how it's gonna do. It's gonna try to grow into a tree from here. This, on the other hand, is a saw palmetto. You've probably heard of saw palmetto. You can buy saw palmetto capsules in health food stores to treat various ailments. And look how the stem there is square. The other thing about the saw palmetto is that on the stem, there's these little teeth, which is why it's a saw palmetto as opposed to any other kind. It's our last day here at Anastasia State Park. And uh, one of the things we've driven by a few times is an amazing looking lighthouse and we found out that they are open to the public and they have a lighthouse museum so we're going to go up and take a look at that and i'm hoping for some really great views from the top of the lighthouse of the entire saint augustine area look at you and your matching mask and blouse <laughs> out on the town today Fun fact, before this lighthouse was electrified, the lighthouse keepers had to climb to the top every two and a half hours during the night to keep the light burning. Wow. Another fun fact is that there was not just one lighthouse keeper, three lighthouse keepers lived at the house here at the same time so that they could work in shifts, which is a good thing considering the every two and a half hour schedule to keep the lamp lit. Okay, how many steps have we got, Kath? 219. Woo! Every two and a half hours. They must have been in great shape. So where did they get all that oil? They kept it in big containers, just like these down at the bottom of the lighthouse. I was pleased to find out that the uh, lighthouse has a snack bar called the uh, the tin pickle or the something pickle. something pickle. But uh, I got a hot dog that they called the destroyer, and um, yeah, take a look at this. I think it'll do me in. Meanwhile, Kathy is being healthy, and she's eating 
Kirkland protein bar and Silver Springs water. Good for her. The living quarters here in the Lighthouse Capers house are really quite ornate and beautiful. This is an exhibit of things found by underwater archaeologists off the coast of St. Augustine. Apparently not a sunken ship where they found these things. Perhaps the sailors dumped them overboard to try to lighten the ship during a storm. In this exhibit, they've left this kind of gray, crusty lump the way they found it on the floor of the ocean. If I looked at that, I would not have any idea that it was something valuable. But then they also give us a picture of the x-ray. And in that, you can see that there's a pistol, some kind of a uh, O-ring, iron spike, hooks, buttons, or coins. There's a lot in there. This is what they found. All of these artifacts are from a ship uh, that was carrying British loyalists to St. Augustine at the end of the Revolutionary War.